resume recording. All right. Um, since so we'll continue actually the coding lecture last Friday since we didn't finish, um, and especially um, I want that we can start uh, our final project if you like to. Uh, if you are capable of, you can definitely start the final project. Uh, if um, if we haven't ha had the you know like the coding capability to start final project so we'll get you there um, through like the rest two months um, so of our study so um, in the end our goal is to make everyone be able to build a neural network like Lego like thing using PyTorch and the train it using data so um, so I mean, by the end of uh, uh, May 15th, so by, by May 15th, so I'll, my hope is everyone can do this and uh, uh, I will design enough exercises and explain enough coding technique to uh, get us there. So, um, and so let me introduce the, the final project. Um, the final project is like a competition. Okay, so why I'm saying it's a competition is because so let me scroll to the final project page and let me send the page, uh, let me send the final project page in the chat. So, um, so this is final project page and, uh, okay, let me magnify it a bit. All right, so this is our final project. Um, and this is our data set. So by the way, uh, the data set looks like, whoops, do not have an image. Okay, so the data set looks like this. So this is Japanese characters and uh, uh, the Japanese characters, but uh, uh, it's pretty much like our digit. We have totally 10 classes. Okay, so for example, this one is one character and this one is the other. And this is like class two, class three and up until class nine. Okay, so as we can see here, it's like every class. So even though this is like a, a Japanese character, this is like a typography, but these are like handwritten. It's pretty, it's like our handwritten digit we learn MNIST, but it's much harder because as we can see here, because due to the special, like, I'm not sure how do we describe it. Due to the special system of Japanese characters, the same Japanese character has two ways of writing it. For example, as we can see here for this one, this is typography and this is like handwritten. It looks totally different because Japanese has two system of characters. One is called uh, Karagana, I think. The other is called uh, Hiragana right here. Um, what happens is we wanna basically, um, we have a starter code and the neural network is given. And the neural network is the current, like uh, um, is used in, for example, if you have heard this AlphaGo, which is uh, the computer uh, playing the game of Go, like the hardest intellectual game human ever, the human ever like devised and the computer has beaten the world champion, not once, but many times. And uh, um, and we'll use the neural network used in AlphaGo, but we we modified a bit. And uh, um, and what we want to do is um, so let me explain uh, right here. Uh, oh, right here. So what we want to do is we want to write um, we want to write a gradient descent algorithm for the network given. Okay. Um, Sorry, I think it's here, right? Uh, where is it? Um, oh, right here, okay. So, and our um, our net is called a CNN, which we'll learn later. So it's, uh, it's called convolutional neural network. Um, so we'll learn later and uh, we'll use resonant 18, 34 and 50. Um, and the code is like given. So uh, how to build these networks are given. But 
if we have learned our class, we should be able to modify it. Um, but right now, maybe we, we do not know how to modify it, but uh, in the end, we'll know. And then next is we use a torch optimum interface, like optimizer interface to write our own gradient descent, all right? So we have learned this, but we haven't learned how do we write uh, stochastic gradient descent in using the PyTorch optim optimizer interface. And these, so these method um, are the methods we will learn in the rest of uh, the semester. Maybe not the convergence result. Maybe we we'll only we we can maybe we have only time to learn uh, the convergence uh, result for momentum, um, but not for atom. Maybe not for uh, RMS prop. But maybe we have time to learn the convergence for BFGS, and uh, um, and this one is optional. So basically, what happens is uh, uh, for the final project, uh, we are supposed to implement like two of them. Um, like uh, um, it's up to your choice to implement two or you, you can implement more. So that, that's a final project. And why it's called a competition is because we have a leaderboard right here. So for example, I submit a starter code uh, right here and its score is 79% uh, 846. This means my solution got like 79.8% 79 correct. So for example, this is a benchmark. This benchmark got 91% correct. This benchmark is trained like, um, you know, using, um, so this one is like the, this one is the, this one solution is the starter code and this one is the benchmark I produced. And our goal is to at least beat this benchmark. So if we have submit an answer, so because I'm the host, so, uh, and I won't see, so you won't see me on the leaderboard because I have access to the answers. Um, so here, there is a private leaderboard and there is a public leaderboard. Uh, we, why we have two leaderboards is for public leaderboard. It's like, um, so we'll compete with others. If we submit an answer, our team will appear on the public leaderboard after the, um, the competition ends, like after we have submit our final project uh, report, submit our final solution, um, we'll see this private leaderboard. So it may change. And uh, um, what happens is we cannot submit unlimited answer per day. So we can only submit two solutions per day. Um, this means we, we, this basically means we don't wanna start our project in the last week. And this is also um, our intention that we'll learn uh, how do we write quality PyTorch code throughout the semester, not just, you know, last week try to copy paste something. And even though we'll do lots of copy pasting because many things uh, are like uh, uh, template-ish. So if, for example, um, if you have a local coding environment, I highly recommend you install Visual Studio Code. So let me show Visual Studio Code. Um, because I'm, I'm like a lazy guy, um, I have many snippets. So let me show you guys what a snippet means. So for example, if I browse down in our code and, uh, and if I enter, so if I enter PyTorch, for example, I have all these uh, snippets. What does that mean is if I click one of these, it's basically like a whole line of command is appearing and uh, it saves us some copy pasting time, but essentially it's copy pasting. I mean, um, so for example, I can do, I can even do a whole example, for example, example MNIST and it generates like a whole chunk of code from the neural network 
and the two like the file. So this is like a main file. Let me delete this. All right. So what? Um, so if we um, would like to have a local coding environment, Visual Studio Code is my recommendation. Um, and now let's back to um, this uh, uh, final project. And uh, then we have our starter code. So for example, this is uh, our starter code. Um, so for example, I submitted this uh, three days ago and this starter code contains everything, every template we need to uh, finish the final project. For example, we have all the uh, packages needed and then we load the data. Uh, so we just need to, what happens is we just need to, if we log in to Kaggle and uh, what I see here is edit, but uh, if you log into Kaggle and participate this competition, what you will see here is copy and edit, okay? And then we just click this copy and edit. We can work on this starter code. Um, so let me let me just show you guys what it is like uh, to copy and edit. So for example, if I just click any other. Um... So for example, this is someone else's like a tweet analysis, simple one, LSTM, GRU. What I see here is copy and edit. So if it's not mine, I can copy and edit this. If I click copy and edit, what's this? Yeah, let me let me just show a uh, existing competition. So for example, uh, this one is predict a chest X-ray abnormalities, abnormalities detection. So for example, I saw this by most votes and uh, I can do copy and edit right here. If I click copy and edit, so we will have our Kaggle cloud. So this is running in cloud. This is pretty much like CoLab. So we have a menu, we can choose GPU right here. And this is now, uh, and we have a menu. For example, we can see the menu didn't show it, let me see. So for example, we can see how many disk we have and how many CPU have, how many RAM we have. And uh, this is pretty much like a cloud, a cloud lab, but on Kaggle, so we can run all the cells. And pretty much this is like Python. Um, and if, what we wanna do is if we wanna run it and uh, submit to the competition, we just click this uh, save version and click save and run all, and then we'll have a solution generated. I mean, this is just someone else's code, but uh, if you do this, using the starter code, a solution will be generated. So what we would like to do is we just, you know, so these are template. And uh, some, for example, visualize the samples. So here are some, uh, 28 by 28 matrix. For example, this is zero, class zero, class one, class four, class nine. And next is our goal is to write an optimizer um, for the final project. And like I said, even though now we do not know how to code this yet, but in two months, we should be able to code this. So for example, here is an introduction to the model. And uh, cross validation we'll do uh, in a later coding lecture and also does hyperparameter tuning. So this net is like a built-in in PyTorch, in Torch Vision to be specific. It's a computer vision uh, package uh, just uh, derived on this Torch, okay. And, uh, um, and for example, this is our neural network. It's called a ResNet. Like I said, the ResNet is used in the famous AlphaGo, which changed the world. Like at least it makes the world know, you know, the deep learning can achieve so such amazing result. And for example, in this starter code, we we choose ResNet 18, and we'll we'll learn what does this double asterisk mean in Python. So it's uh, it's called a magic operator. And uh, um, if we just use ResNet 18 here, so we're using the ResNet 18, this is the smallest ResNet. It has about 10 million parameters. This has like a, a 
20, I'm sorry, 10 million. This has 20 million, about 22 million parameter. This one has about like 40 something. I forgot parameters. Um, okay, so this is our model. We can see the model is quite com uh, complicated. It has uh, so many layers, um, you know, and it has uh, 11, 11 uh, million, right? 11 million parameters. So total parameters. And uh, um, the next is we prepare the train loader. So we have learned uh, the train loader in last coding lecture, but uh, we'll you know, illustrate more on this uh, and today. And then, um, so this part is how do we implement um, an optimizer? So this one I took from the official torch code and I simplify it uh, because the official code, you know, like this published code is for everyone to use. So it has lots of, you know, switches, arguments. Uh, I simplified to, to make it minimal. So uh, I mean, to, 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 to build a minimally possible optimizer, but implemented using this PyTorch optimizer interface. So as we can see, this is class and today we'll learn more about class. And class is like a, um, the intended way of coding PyTorch. Um, so next is training. So the training is pretty much template. So after we write down our um, optimizer, so we need to initiate the train. Uh, so model, so these are prints. For example, we train 30 epoch here and uh, uh, our last function begins, you know, going down. For example, initially we have 2.2 something. This is average uh, cross entropy for each sample. For example, in the first epoch, our average cross entropy is 2.2 and it gradually decreases to uh, 0 0.75 uh, for you know, like uh, um, after 30 epoch. So in the homework four theory, we'll see that the, the seven five, you know, it's pretty good uh, given it's a float number. So um, normally the best one, so if we achieve like 99% of accuracy, normally like um, the cross entropy, the average of cross entropy only reaches like 0.5 level. So that's pretty good. And the rest is template. If we have trained our model, we just evaluate our model and then we just, you know, run this uh, sample code. So this is our prediction for the uh, solution. And after we export our solution, so our solution will be here. So we just run this starter code it will generate a solution for us. And if we click submit and uh, uh, it shows submit to competition, wash your spring 2000 math 415, 450. You have two submission remain to today, submission reset daily. So if I submit, all right, so I submit it, then I can view my submission as we can see here. Um, so I have two submission, but they are the same submission. I mean, so it will show uh, my submission here, for example, the private school. Okay, so because I'm the host, so I, I know the private school of, uh, of that, but uh, this won't show uh, if uh, we participate as a team. So this is pretty much our final project. And our goal is to be able to try this final project after two months. And I got an email actually from uh, one of us saying, because right now we are having a remote class. So it's very hard to find a teammate. So right now, uh, let me have this poll right here. So let me have this poll right here um, to just to survey what we would like to see um, for the final project. I mean, if, you're watching this lecture asynchronously, you can also email me and uh, uh, post on Piazza. So let me launch this poll. So this poll is about our final project. Okay.
All right. I see. Um, okay. So uh, thanks for the feedback. And uh, I see some of some of us. Uh, some of us had trouble um, doing the coding homework. Uh, some of us uh, have a teammate, but would like to, you know, have a meetup session as well. So uh, we'll schedule, you know, a final uh, project meetup session uh, during our class time, um, and to discuss maybe a possible uh, teammate. So if we cannot find one and we have trouble coding. Uh, what I also want to see, uh, uh, what I will also want to see is actually, if we have trouble um, trying the coding homework, um, the answer is we should really go through um, all the you know notebook we had because in many in many uh, some of the functions, some of the functions. So some of the functions assigned in the homework are already given in the lecture. So sometimes we just need to copy several lines of code from the lecture and make, wrap it up in the function and uh, call it a day for the homework. Um, the only thing is we got to know what uh, every lines of code is doing uh, in the lecture notebook. So, for example, in the in the uh, in the homework, we have uh, we have a, a question. So, in the in the homework just uh, submitted, we have a question called uh, uh, "One Hot Encoding." For example, if we just Google uh, Python uh, "One Hot Encoding," and here, so for example. Um, For example, how can one uh, one hot encode in Python? All right. For example, I, I read this link uh, from an office hour inquiry. So I want to show our student, like show um, the student who asked this question, how we can Google. And uh, for example, we'll see. So this is Stack Overflow. Stack Overflow is I mean, the biggest coding website, and we can find many answers on Stack Overflow. Um, if, for example, if I'm your calculus instructor, your calculus instructor will tell you, okay, so don't Google online, we need to learn everything. But I actually, I want to encourage us to Google Stack Overflow because reading other people's code is a serious and is a, is a very important skill if we want to dedicate uh, our career, some part of our career in coding, because a majority of the time um, we in our work is reading other people's code and figuring out what that code does. And then we can make some modification, you know? So most of the time, unless we are doing research, for example, like I am doing right now, if we're going to a company, if we are, you know, uh, go to a grad school, um, most of the time, I would say 90% of the time, we are modifying other people's code. So reading, reading other people's code is the most important skill, like we want to be trained uh, in our class. For example, the first answer, it's using pandas. Um, so my experience is if we see pandas, we ignore it. Okay, so pandas is very slow. And uh, uh, it's not using GPU, um, but uh, if we see an answer in NumPy, okay, it's a good answer. So for example, uh, this is scikit-learn. So sklearn is scikit-learn. It, it's okay as well, but, uh, but it's already wrapped up encapsulated in the function. So uh, it's not a good answer either. What we would like to see is, um, is NumPy, is an answer that's written in NumPy, for example. So let's scroll down. Uh, for example, this is NumPy, okay? And this is actually the, uh, the answer I would like uh, us to learn. So, um, so for example, this is NumPy, all right? And uh, if we wanna, if we see a NumPy solution, 
we just port it to Torch. So how do we port it to Torch? We find an equivalent function in PyTorch of this NumPy i function. This is i is an identity matrix. So, uh, so for example, uh, yeah, doesn't show. Okay, here we go. So for example, here NumPy i so return a two D array with one on the diagonal and zero elsewhere. So this is an identity matrix, and actually Torch has an exact same function. So Torch I, um, here we go. So as we can see, return a 2D tensor with one on the diagonal and zero elsewhere. Even the description is similar to what NumPy has, all right? And, uh, um, and we can pretty much, we can port this answer to, um, to Torch. And this is, this is an important skill. Um, so that, that's why that's why in the homework, I didn't discourage you to uh, to learn other people's code. For example, from Stack Overflow, you just need to like attach where you obtain this code. You know, so I mean, it's it's totally I totally encourage you to make use of uh, the Google. You know, if you wanna, uh, if we wanna, for example, we wanna code something, we can even more. For example, in the in the midterm, we'll have. Uh, We'll have uh, this. Uh, so uh, we'll have this. Uh, uh, so for example, in in the midterm, we'll have what is the behavior of next and eta. Um, so it's uh, it's also in the review question. Um, if we want to know more about it, we just Google. You know, next eta Python, and we just scroll down. So for example, so Python iterators. I think the program Z is a good like uh, introduction Python website. So we just go to it. Um, so for example, a uh, lot of uh, advertisement, but uh, I guess it's fine. So for example, it has these sample code and uh, we can basically, we just copy the sample code and we upload to a CoLab notebook and we run it and we test its behavior. So, uh, and then we learn more about it. And this is how we learn code, uh, learn to code. Um, learning code um, is not about, I mean, I would say not about, um, you know, like learn from scratch. As I said earlier, learning to code is mostly learning how to modify, how to understand other people's code, okay? So that, that's the experience. Also, um, we need to know some of the algorithm, for example, in the interview. Um, in the interview, we need to be able to write our own code uh, for some simple algorithm, but uh, most of the time, like I said. And also, if you guys try some interview, um, like I did, like, uh, I don't know, 12 years ago, th actually 13 years ago, so back in 08, but, uh, even though I found several intern job, but I didn't get any formal job offer because of the economic crisis. So I stayed in school and continued to be a PhD. But originally I was a coder and uh, intended to go to the industry. So, uh, so now let's back, um, let's back to the coding lecture. Uh, let's briefly review it. So the next and the eater, um, so for example, the eta, what does eta function do and what does next function do? Uh, for example, this will return the DF. It's basically, it's putting this list into an iterator and the next returns the next entry in this iterator. Okay. So moreover, if we do something like this, okay. So our list equal this and we do this, okay. Uh, and we, we we do something like this. And now we do the next again. So we'll see that. So this one returns the DF, right? But if we do next again for this iterator, it will literally returns the next entry. So this this is how like a next and uh, uh, eater 
doing things. And now let's briefly review stochastic gradient descent. Um, so for example, this is stochastic gradient descent. The difference with uh, gradient descent is we only compute. So for example, right here, originally right here, uh, what we have is the average gradient of these n samples. But right now, uh, we only have one sample. So this is stochastic gradient descent. And, but in practice, it's, uh, it's actually about mini batch SGD. And the mini batch is every time we just do gradient descent for a batch. And same thing happens here. The algorithm changes too. So if we look at this, uh, the most important expression right here, okay? Despite all these indices, so we can ignore these indices. These indices are just, you know, try to uh, make this a formal algorithm. But the key idea is every time we just choose a bunch of samples to compute the gradient and then we average it instead of a single sample. So now let's um, back to the um, coding part. Um, so we do this, okay. We load the train and the length of the train is 60,000. Okay. And what happens here is this essentially converts the train file into an iterator into an iterable object. So let me add this, I'll set the train into an iterable object. And every batch contains batch size that many samples. So for example, if we, uh, if we set this batch size to be 32, then every batch, we just have 32 images. So uh, same thing happens here. So if we do this, okay. Oh, train loader is not defined, my bad. So if we define the train loader and we take the sample. So my sample, um, I think the type of sample is a list. Is it, oh, it's a list, okay. So if we try to print sample, we will see it has two tenses, so sample. Okay, so for example, the first tensor looks like this. The second tensor looks like this. So this is a label and these are our uh, images matrices. So for example, if we print, um, let's print, let's just initial, uh, e explicitly print um, So the sample zero, this one is train data. So images, and this one are the train labels. So for example, how do we uh, translate or so how do we understand um, the, let's say the, this code. So first of all, we have 32, okay. So the first one is 32. So what happens is 32 is, the first 32 is batch size. And we also have a one here. The one is number of color channels because we have grayscale image. So it's like black and white images. Um, we only have one channel, but sometimes if we have a photo, uh, we have three color channels, RGB. And then this 28 by 28 is just uh, uh, with its length and width, okay, for each image. So this tensor um, is four dimensional. It's first dimension is batch size uh, and then it's color channels length and width. Okay. Um, so next is, so next uh, our today's class, we wanna introduce the class. Okay. So this was our original neural network. Um, and what happens is we wanna, we wanna implement it uh, right here. So this is a class implementation. So let me uh, make it smaller. So this is a class implementation and this 
class implementation actually is, so let me try to copy and make it a uh, cleaner code without all these comments. So let me delete this comment. Let us delete this comment. Delete the comment. But we have commented one on top. Okay, so this one is uh, is deleted comment and we delete this one comment. And this is a minimally implemented uh, PyTorch classes. So the, the first one is init function with double underscore is a Python built-in function that we need to initialize a class. And every class needs to be started with this initial function, okay? And the self right here is referring to the class object itself. It's also a template thing. Uh, we just need to keep this self here. So this super is a constructor. It's used if uh, it's a subclass, okay? So sometimes we don't need this actually. The super is just a need to, um, but for the NM module subclass, we just need to this. And then here are some initializations. So we'll, we'll illustrate using more simple example. And here is how we perform the forward pass. So for example, the first one is to reshape uh, the input and then we put it into a linear layer and then we activate it using ReLU. And last, we just put it into another linear layer and then we do output. So now what we wanna do is we wanna write our own class. So for example, we can write our own class named the vector. Okay. And what happens is, like I said earlier, every class starts with an initial function. So this is initialization. So for example, with def init. And again, this is this is template. Okay, so self. And here are some input. So, so for example, let me add a comment here. So here is custom input to initialize a class. So we can do like X coordinate of, uh, of class of this vector. So this is our class and then we do Y coordinates. And sometimes we can even do Z coordinate. And then in our in our class, which is the definition, sorry, we have comma. So in our class, then we do self X, okay? Um, equals X coordinates. And then self Y equals Y coordinates. So these are called the attributes of a class. So for example, our right now our class has attributes, uh, attribute X um, and uh, attribute Y, okay. So, and, and this is a minimally in implemented class and we're well done actually. So if we run this line of code, it's already a class, the class is there. So how do we initialize an object in this vector class is we basically we do the following. So V1 equals vector. So as we can see here, uh, by the way, Google Colab is using, uh, is using Visual Studio codes, this type of interface. So as we can see here, the vector is already here. So this icon means it's class. So we will see, so for example, a variable is like a, it's like a cube and the function is like a, it's like a wrong, wrong object. So, um, and the class is like this branch with trees. So we have to have two input, for example. So if we put a parenthesis here, okay. So uh, right here, 
we have. So the um, the collab reminds us, oh, you have two initialization, for example, X coordinate and Y coordinate. Then we can do X coordinate equals, I don't know, 1.0, sorry, 1.0 and Y coordinate equals uh, 2.0 and our vector is initialized. Okay, so, and it has two attributes, remember? If we print Vx, V1x and V1y, we will have uh, uh, 1.0 and 2.0, okay? So what happens is we have, we have like actually uh, like defined um, a vector in this way. And then next is, so this is the initialization of a class. Next is we can define what they call a method associated with this class. So for example, this is, this is a neural network class and uh, this forward is a method or a function associated with this class. And what we can do is we can define something similar. Okay, something similar uh, like in this vector class. For example, if we initialize another vector, let's say uh, V2, okay. Uh, we say X coords is uh, minus 1.0 and Y coordinate is 1.0, okay. Um, so V2 is also there. All right, so for example, it's as we can see, it's 1.0, 2.0 and V2 X coordinate is minus one and V2's Y coordinate is one. Um, now let's see a simple algorithm. It's V1 plus V2. Let's see what happens. All right. What's going to happen is the Python will complain unsupported operand type for plus vector and vector. Okay. Um, the reason is because the addition is not defined for this two vector. Um, but we can write our uh, custom addition, this function. So for example, we, we, we define this add. Okay. So for example, self um, with another vector. Um, so V, okay. And what we want to return is we want to return so that we want to return a list, okay. So um, for example, we do the following. So uh, we do a list um, so that it is the sum vec equals, so we first, we write, um, we write a list like this, okay? Uh, why we're putting self here is because every function, if we put a self here, we can access to the x, y coordinate in our function. So like this, so self y, self, uh, self x. And uh, if, but, and in the sub function, in a sub method like this, we do not have access to x cores anymore. So for example, if we do this, um, Python will actually complain. So uh, don't do this, okay. We, after we initialize the x cores or y cores, we just ignore it. So these are some initialization variable. And then what happens is what we wanna return is the sum back. So for example, the sum back zero is self x plus back x. And I mean, this is a, this is a simple, this is not the best implementation, but it's a simple implementation. So it's only for uh, pedagogical purposes and uh, um, 
actually we have better ways to define add. So I'll introduce it. Uh, maybe if we have time, I'll introduce it. And then we return the sum back. Okay. And now let's try to do it. So for example, we have a new method. All right. And uh, we initialize these two vector again. So we have to run this line of code again because in the memory, it was the old one that does not have this add, okay? We have this, okay? Now we add a style of code here. So now we can do v1. It has a new method. If we put dot here, if we put dot here, see, we have a function. And uh, what's happening is we can do add v2. And we return the sum, which is uh, the sum of one with minus one and uh, two and one, okay? And what's even more, okay, so what's even more is we, how do we, uh, how do we do this? Is we can add, so we can define something like this, okay, so self. Uh, we can actually define, we can actually define something like this. So this is replacing. So this is replacing, this is def actually define the, the plus signs behavior for this class, okay? So for example, we can define that. We return self x, plus back x and self y uh, back y, okay? So what happens here? Let's see if uh, it will be okay. So now let's uh, run this cell code again. Um, let's do this. So as we can see, it was originally originally not defined. The addition, the add operator, like we just have demonstrated, originally was not defined, but we can define it using this double underscore. This just means system like built in method. And uh, uh, so I guess that's it for today. Uh, and next time, um, so I guess next time, so um, yeah. So next time I'll briefly talk about, um, you know, like the SGD part, then we'll back to, you know, our uh, like theory lecture. Uh, we learn like how uh, SGD, how do we improve SGD? So that's it for today. Okay. So I'll stop recording. And if you have some short question, you can stay here. <laughs>